Chrome Developer Tools and extensions are very helpful and important for web developers. And in this video, I'm going to show you 8 essential Chrome extensions that will boost your productivity, all the DevTools features that will streamline your workflow, and pro tips to speed up your development process. Let's dive in. Let's start with extensions. I prefer using Google Chrome as my daily browser because it's fast and offers a good developer experience. However, most of the extensions that I use have equivalents or similar alternatives on Safari, Edge and other browsers. So if you use a different browser, you can simply search for the extension name that I'm showing and you'll find it in your browser. The first extension is Adblock Plus, which helps you eliminate distractions and it blocks ads on websites you visit. Although it's not mainly for developers, it can be helpful to block ads on websites you visit. Along with that, you can also use I don't care about cookies extension, which will block the annoying cookie pop-ups that you see on most of the GDPR compliant websites. Next, we have React and Vue.js DevTools. These extensions are essential for debugging React or Vue.js applications. This will add a separate tab in your DevTools where you can inspect components, see their props and state and much more. Next, we have the Redux DevTools extension. If your app uses Redux, this extension will help you debug its states. It also adds a separate tab in your DevTools where you can see the Redux state. Another helpful extension is Dark Mode. This will enable Dark Mode on websites that don't have it. For example, you can see it on Wikipedia or Google Calendar or Google Sheets and so on. All of the websites that don't support Dark Mode, this will add it for you. Another useful extension is JSON Formatter. This will make raw JSON data readable. If you have a compressed JSON file, let's say, you can paste it here and it will format it nicely. Next extension is Colorzilla, which helps you grab the exact color you want. It's just a color picker, but in your browser. And similar to Colorzilla, we have Vod Font. This extension gives you the font from a website. For instance, if you see a font on another website that you like and want to use it in your design, you can determine the font with this extension. And lastly, we have the screenshot tool, which allows you to take easy screenshots. This can be helpful when you want to screenshot your projects to put them in your portfolio or some other cases. Now let's take a look at developer tools in our browser. You can access them by right clicking and selecting inspect or by just pressing Fn plus F12. The first tab that you will see here is the elements tab. This is your control center for HTML and CSS where you can inspect the structure of your web page and view the CSS styles applied to the elements. And you can also make edits here, for example you can directly edit your CSS here and see the live results on the screen. Next we have the console tab. This is where you can interact with JavaScript. You can even run JavaScript code here. But this tab is mostly used for checking errors or log messages here while you are debugging your application. But if you need to debug your JavaScript code in more depth, you would go to the Sources tab. You can use this tab to set breakpoints, and this way you can pause the code execution and then run through your code line by line. Next, we have the Network tab, which displays every resource that a website loads, such as HTML, CSS, JS files, images, icons, and so on. Here, the most important parts that you will be interested in is the headers, where you can see the request headers, and also the response tab, which is what you got back from the server. Another core tab is the application tab. Here, you can inspect and manage app storage. You can check for your local storage items or cookies and sessions, and background services like background cache, service workers, and so on. Next, we have a couple of tabs which are for analyzing your website performance. The first one is Performance tab. This will help you to profile your site's load times and identify bottlenecks if you want to optimize your website speed. And this is one of the first places you might look into. The Memory tab is for tracking memory usage and identifying memory leaks. And another very useful tab is this Lighthouse tab. This is very useful auditing tool where you can run audits for performance, accessibility and also SEO optimization. For example, you can see it gives you the performance of your web page, the accessibility score, best practices along with SEO optimization. And to find out how these were estimated, you can scroll down to find out more in depth. And you can see we also have Adblock Plus and Redux tabs added. These were added because of the extensions that we installed. The Redux tab will be very useful when you work with an application that uses the Redux state. And lastly, we have the Recorder tab. 
This will help you capture and replay user interactions to identify errors or automate testing on your website. And now let's look at some pro tips to enhance your web development workflow. To test your website across various screens and resolutions, you can click on this top left icon and then select your desired resolution here. Or you can enter your custom resolution if you want to. The other icon next to it is for selecting elements on your screen. You can just hover on the element you want to select and click on it and then this will bring you to the element in the HTML file. Next, in the Network tab, we have this throttling property. If you want to check how your website performs on slower connections, you can set the network throttling to slow 3G, or you can even set it offline to see how it looks like on offline mode. And also you can add the custom throttling here. Another tip is you can use conditional breakpoints. Let's say you want to set the breakpoint on this line, but only when a certain condition is met. Let's say when the error exists, instead of clicking on this right dot as you would do usually, you would right click on it and select add conditional breakpoint. And here you can enter the JavaScript expression that needs to be true in order for the breakpoint to pause. For example, we can set a condition for the error to exist and only in this case this breakpoint will apply. And if you hover on it, you can see that this is not a typical breakpoint but with a condition in case the error exists. Another Chrome specific feature is the workspaces. You can edit your code in the code editor and see the changes reflected in your browser instantly with workspaces. To enable this, you can just drag and drop your project folder here and click allow. And now you can see your real project files here and you can see their content. And this is formatted nicely as you have in your code editor. And if you make any changes here, or you make changes from your code editor, this will sync between both here and code editor. And the last bonus tip, you can save time by using keyboard shortcuts. This command menu can also be accessed by command shift P on Mac or control shift P on Windows. This lets you quickly search for and execute specific DevTools actions using keyboard shortcuts. Hope this was helpful. If you'd like to see similar customizations and tips for your code editor, then I recommend you watch this video next.